Well, hey folks, good evening. Welcome to the more summer 2020 adventures day 80 on September the 13th. <laughs> the days run together 2020. Okay, folks, today was uh, one of those days that uh, you look back and you say, uh, what did I do today? <laughs> uh, I didn't do a whole lot. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, got up normal time this morning and had our breakfast and all that and uh, went and uh, worshipped with uh, True Life Church uh, here in, in Cedar Ridge. Uh, it was formerly, uh, I think, Cedar Ridge First Assembly. But anyway, that's where my uh, high school friend uh, Bobby and his wife Debbie are the pastors. Um, they had a guest speaker this morning um, who is involved with uh, Mercy Ships. It's a... Uh, It's kind of like Hope, uh, you know, uh, program, uh, but they go uh, into, and, and they primarily go into Africa. Um, he pointed out that uh, of the billion poorest countries in the world, 90% of them are on the continent of Africa. Okay. So, cause you know, he was, they brought up the question that they've been asked, well, why do you just concentrate on Africa? What about, you know, India and Southeast Asia and South America, you know, the continent of South America. And, uh, you know, his answer was that, uh, you know, 90% of the poorest people, poorest countries in the world are on the continent of Africa. And so they service the uh, um, countries that are bordering, you know, the oceans uh, because it's a ship, okay? Um, all the staff, um, everything from the captain of the ship on down to the, the, the lowest uh, seamen, to the doctors and nurses, anesthesiologists, everybody, school teachers, everybody is all volunteer. Uh, and they, they pay their own way to uh, from wherever they are to the country that they're gonna meet up with the ship. And they're even, they're there for anywhere from two weeks to a year, okay? Uh, on ship, doing their volunteer thing. Uh, and they uh, they pay for the room and board uh, on the ship and, uh, other than that, they, they work on the ship, you know, and like I say, doctors, nurses, uh, you know, orthopedics, uh, you know, anesthesiologists, the, the whole gambit, uh, plus school teachers and maintenance and everything else. So, you know, it's, uh, and it was a good service. It was a good program. Um, and, and we got, I say, you know, we, we got there, we were able to uh, visit with, uh, with uh, Pastor Hillier uh, before uh, service. And then of course, definitely after the service, we visited some more. Um, and then, you know, being pastors, their job is never finished. And I know that being a preacher's kid, uh, you know, I'm pastor's kid. So, you know, we didn't want to infringe upon their time doing their pastoral duties. So, we, you know, we didn't. Uh, in fact, he, he come by here a while ago, uh, bought us a plate of cookies and, and, and thanked us again for stopping by. And, and, and told me in no certain terms, uh, uncertain terms, uh, yesterday and today, not to surprise him no more. Okay because had he known that I was coming, he could have jiggled his schedule and they could have both, him and Debbie, could have spent more time with us. You know, so next time we come to Cedar Edge, I'll let him know we're coming in advance. Uh, and it looks like maybe uh, maybe August next year, okay? But uh, having said all that, you know, folks, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we come back from church, uh, Chrissy fixed a, 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 you know, a good dinner, but before that, uh, you know, she asked me, you know, you want you want dinner or you want supper? I said, well, somewhere in between, okay? And about an hour after we got home, I started getting tired. I mean, just, the oh, I the head was doing one of these. I went back and I took me a three-hour nap. <laughs> Something I haven't done in, in ages, okay? Uh, maybe it's the trip taking its toll. I more likely suspect it's the elevation, you know, coming from 23 feet in elevation to 6,200 feet in elevation. Um, you know, my shallow breathing and, and whatever else, you know, COPD and everything, I may not be bringing enough oxygen in. So saying that, you know, I needed that rest. <laughs> uh, but it was good and I, I had a good nap. I feel I feel good. Uh, you know, it was a, a good day here and a good night. Um, in, in some ways, I'm going to be sorry to leave. Uh, like, uh, you know, I, I send postcards to the grandkids and, and, you know, 
sometimes and you know some of them and you know and even post things on online and you know you know, you know. Colorado's my home okay I may have been bored born elsewhere but I uh, I went to high school I grew up in Colorado you know and uh, you know I love my Rockies you know I love my Broncos uh, I love the Avalanche you know and I'll support uh, the basketball and uh, the uh, soccer team, but uh, you know, they're not my, you know, <laughs> I'm not a fan of those two sports, so that's okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, I like hockey, I love baseball, and I, and, I, and, I, and I do love football, but baseball's gotta be my number one. But anyway, you know, so I could live in Colorado. I don't know, uh, I have been told that that when we get to Buny here in a few weeks, uh, I'll be surprised because it's changed so much. Even from the last year, the, uh, five years ago, we had a high school reunion and, and it was the first time that, that Chrissy met a lot of my classmates. And she had met a couple of them, but not all of them like, like she did that at the reunion. But uh, you know, it has changed so much that, uh, you know, it wouldn't even be the same, you know, so, but uh, you know, I know I'm not leaving the East Coast Mom is not going away from her kids and her grandbabies. Okay, so moving back to Colorado is going to be slim to none, if ever. But I could live in Cedar Ridge. <laughs> I could. <laughs> yeah, they got some nice deer and some nice elk around here. I could live here. <laughs> they got some good fishing. I could live here. All right. But saying all of that, you know, every place we've been on this trip, you know, this is, like I say, this is day 80. Uh, you know, and, and every place that we have been on this trip, we have seen the splendor and the glory of God's handiwork. You know, um, you know, it's just, I mean, I'm looking across the, the road right now because I'm outside, obviously I'm outside the camper. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at the trees right across and I'm seeing, you know, five different colors right here in front of me, you know. And uh, I mean, today was in the high 70s, you know. Granted, they had snow three days ago. <laughs> okay, but, uh, you know, that's to be expected. Um, you know, a lot of times growing up, uh, by the end of September, the 1st of October, you know, we were still playing football and we were playing in snow and mud, okay? Cold mud, all right? Icy mud, all right? So it's, that's something that you expect living in Colorado, living in elevation, whether it be Colorado or Idaho or Montana or wherever, you know? Um, but, you know, uh, Wyoming had its beauty, but Colorado's got the Rockies, okay? And so does Idaho, and part of Montana. All right, but uh, hey, you know, it's 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 good, and it's just looking here. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. Now, I want to show you something, so folks. See, you see back here behind me. Okay, um, you know, I told you about about Mama's uh, uh, rule about two nights in the RV in one state before it goes on the map. Okay. Well, today I got to put in Montana. South Dakota, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. So, you know, on this trip, on this trip, we have so far placed 12 new decals on the map. We've got four left before the trip's over with. So, uh, you know, so far we're, we're up to date. I waited until, you know, now to, to finish in the, and I put five of them on today. And, uh, you know, this is, by the way, this is, this is the, a map that uh, that uh, our youngest son and his family got us right after we got the RV. And so, uh, you know, we got on the outside so everybody can see it and we can tell them that's that's from our kids. That's from that's from that's from James and Jen and his family, her family, their family. You know, that's from the James Morse family. OK, <laughs> but hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, and, and speaking of good, you know, just a while ago, you know, like I say, we, we visited with, with, with Bobby and, and, and Debbie after church and all that, you know, Pastor Hillier and his wife. Just a while ago, because they know we're leaving in the morning, he brought over a, a, a plate of fresh baked cookies. I mean, they were wrapped, okay, and it was still, it was, it was starting to get steam on the inside because they, they just came out of the oven. <laughs> so when we get finished, I'm going inside and have me some cookies and ice cream. Gee, imagine that. <laughs> But hey, you know, it's all good. And um, and speaking of good, 
and Sunday and a good service. And let me bring you some good word, okay? Today's scripture is uh, Psalms 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the short version is the same version. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Okay? Psalms 23, 6. All right? And, and you know, we are so blessed. And I'm saying we. I, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about just you. I'm talking about myself and my wife. You know, we are so blessed. Um, you know, who would have thought, you know, four or five years ago that we'd be taking a four-month vacation in an RV that we neither one of us had dreamed about ever even having, you know. Um, you know, she, uh, years ago, she, she said, you know, take me camping, take me camping, take me camping. You know, I wouldn't do it. I said, listen, this is... As a Marine, he's out in the field. Who wants to go camping on the weekend? Well, I had to get enough of that money through Friday. All right. As I got older, you know, I said, you know what? You know, so now we go, as she calls it, glamping instead of camping. Okay. She doesn't want to do, she doesn't want to do that camping no more, you know. But that's just an idea. That's just an example of the, the goodness and the mercy, you know. Uh, you know, the, the life I was living before I could, developed and made a personal commitment to have a relationship with Christ, my Lord and Savior, um, you know, I shouldn't be here right now, quite honestly, okay? I did things and had things done um, that by any stretch of the mind, um, I should be underground, not on the ground, okay? Um, you know, those are and yet, with all of that, everything that I did, God still loved me enough that he sent Christ, Jesus Christ, to his son to die on the cross for me, you know. And for that reason alone, that mercy and that goodness that he gave me, you know, so unworthy, yet so grateful for that gift of eternal life that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, and, and, and during this time of the pandemic, and, and even the medical field, there are arguments on whether you wear a mask or you don't wear the mask. Whether it's really a pandemic or whether it's just blown out of proportion, you know. Whether it's as, as, as bad as the flu is and, and, and emphysema or if it's something totally different, you know. I don't know. I don't have the answers. All I know is that greater is he that is in me that's he in the world, okay. And if I have to wear a mask, then I'll wear the mask. Do I want to? No. You know, I, I saw one the other day and I said, wearing by force, not by choice, you know, or not by fear. All right. Um, and if they're taking a mask, you know, wearing a mask and, and, and having social distancing. I mean, when we came into church this morning, all the chairs were six feet apart, front and back, side to side. Okay. Now, as people came in, they would move the chair together like Chrissy and I, you know, we're together time. So we moved her chair over to mine and that even made it 12 feet then from the other chair. Okay. But, you know, and then a lot of people did that. But if that's what it takes, but I am, you know, I don't have to be in the church as long as I can have church. Does that make sense? I don't have to be, I don't have to be in that physical building. However, scripture teaches us that we should not forsake one another and we should relish in the assembling together and the uplifting of each other. And that's why you go to church. It's so Christians can uplift and encourage each other. All right. It's not just, you know, you have to go to church because that's what is expected. No, you go to church because you want to. You go to church to help your brother and sister. Okay. And if sometimes the church is held outside, great. You know, if sometimes you can go inside, even better. You know, especially in the summer when you got air conditioning. Okay. But it doesn't matter. But, you know, assemble together. You know, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know. Hey, I'm thankful. Surely the goodness and the mercy shall follow me. You know, I am so unworthy, but yet so grateful. God bless you all. It's getting late. Uh, as you can tell, the sun, uh, a little bit of a, 
I don't know if you can really see it, but a little bit of a sunset over there. Okay. But uh, that being said, God bless y'all. We will come from you tomorrow. We will. Bop, 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 boom. We will come to you from somewhere else tomorrow, but still in Colorado. God bless you. Be safe. Love you now.